Right, welcome back. All right, so what I want to touch on quickly now is Snowden's model for decision making. And really, this model speaks a lot to the challenges we have internal to an organization between the various disciplines and which discipline we use to tackle different types of problem spaces. We've spoken a bit about the knowledge funnel and around the wicked problem at the top, heuristics, and down to algorithm and codify at the, bo at the bottom. Same problem, I'll overlay that uh, knowledge funnel onto this diagram as well. So let's start over here uh, in this space and we're going to start with chaos. Now you'll see what I've got, so I've got a problem versus a solution dimension. And down the bottom here we have a high understanding of the problem versus a low understanding of the problem. And we have uh, known and unknown solutions. So when we're in a chaos space we're actually talking about a low understanding of the problem and unknown solutions. In other words there's the ability to connect cause and effect is almost impossible at this at this particular level. Now this area is commonly referred to as the unknowable. And in here we might have big complex problems, uh, chaotic problems, uh, you know, like a terrorist attack, um, some type of disaster scenarios. We had uh, here in Australia a thing called um, Black Saturday where you know there's fires and, and a number of uh, departments had a whole bunch of procurements sitting on their desks um, that were delayed through whatever processes occur internally and you know there's uh, some interesting effects that have come off the back of a chaos type of situation which is action the only thing you can do to deal with it is to react and do do and do stuff so effectively what occurred here was the same situation you know disaster scenario just do things get signed off things happen all right, but it's the unknowable space. If we go to the other side of this spectrum, you'll see here we've got the simple. And this is a, really to call it nice and simply, the known knowns. All right, or the knowable knowns. Sounds like some type of a fairy tale with knowns. Anyway, moving along. All right, so this simple space is really. You know, quick little transactional processes, um, things that occur, debits and credits that occur on, on, on you know, your accounting packages, those types of things. In other words, they, we, we know them, they're very highly commoditized and we know how to solve them. Okay. Then what you've got is you've got the next level, uh, which is referred to as complicated. All right, and the complicated space is what we refer to as known unknowns. All right, so we're really full of knowns this time. So we've got known unknowns. And this tends to be fairly complicated stuff, but somewhere out there, out there we know how to solve it. This could be building an aircraft, um, servicing an aircraft, building a car, those types of things. In other words, somewhere out there, somebody has the expertise that we can tap into. All right, so we may not have it in our organization, but we know it's sitting out there. And then finally, we have the complex space. Which is really uh, if the the space that predominantly sits with uh, in the design thinking area. All right, we call this the unknown problem space. All right, and I'm gonna go here now. You can see, depending upon the types of problems that we encounter, there's a variety of different ways that we can respond. Because if we look at the knowledge funnel that I introduced you to previously, it actually works across this way, like that. Which means that we can take stuff that sits up here in the complex space in the wicked problem area and we can move it down into heuristics and into codifying within the business. And that's really um, the, the types of problems that we encounter within an organizational. They will fit into one of these categories. Now, you can see that over here is really where the design thinking discipline is targeted at. Okay. Okay. Now, design thinking is there for complex types of problems. It's not a, a, a very strong tool for complicated and simple type problems. The tools and disciplines that exist down here, they're architecture, process improvement, analysis, quite um, financial forecasting models, business planning, those types of things. They all sit down here in a more concrete space. This tends to be a lot more abstract, and that's why it's human related. So you could expect well, we could even overlay another color on here. You could expect that a lot of the things that sit up here are people related. And as we move further down, we get to things like process related. And we move even further, we might get things that are highly repeatable and we can lock them in some technology in ones and zeros.
So really what you've got here is you can apply the design thinking discipline here, but other types of analytical disciplines further down the line here. So this is important because often you see that individuals, they'll, they'll actually use different tool sets, different disciplines that sit up here, and it can confuse the picture. All right, so when you're approaching um, a particular problem space, it's always good to overlay it on this. In other words, you know, how well do we know the problem? You'd be surprised how often we walk into a client site and the problem isn't actually well defined. And people are off building solutions, multi-million dollar exercises. And some of the examples I keep referring to, that's exactly what happens. You know, there's just multi-million dollars of, um, worth of investment going in and people actually don't have a, a, a true grasp of the problem nature. That's where design thinking really gives us the benefit. Catch you later.